Wanapum Dam is located near the center of the Columbia River hydroelectric system. It provides electricity to our region and helps balance the Pacific Northwest's need for renewable energy, fish passage, irrigation, cultural resource protection, and recreation. This massive feat of engineering harnesses the power of the mighty Columbia River to generate electricity for customers throughout the Northwest. Wanapum Dam took four years to build, from July of 1959 to October of 1963. It's more than 8,500 feet long. It's so long that 106 semi-trucks could park on top of the dam from one side to the other. Wanapum Dam is over 180 feet tall, and it's filled with 844,000 cubic yards of concrete. That's enough to build a sidewalk from Seattle to Washington, D.C. It contains 10 turbines and generators that are capable of producing over 1,000 megawatts of electricity, enough energy to power 400,000 homes. And at any given moment, Wanapum Dam can hold back more than 160,000 acre-feet of water to generate electricity. Depending upon river conditions, the dam is capable of passing 1.4 million cubic feet of water every second. Wanapum Dam is large and impressive, but its real power comes from something very small. Tiny snowflakes falling all winter long in the mountains create snowpack. In the spring, this snowpack begins to melt into streams and small rivers that meet in the Columbia River. Every year, this hydrologic cycle provides the Columbia River's large volume of water. The amount of water, plus the average two-foot drop in elevation the river takes for every mile on its journey to the Pacific Ocean, makes it home to more hydroelectric dams than any other river in the United States. So how can moving water create electrical energy? Through a process called energy transformation. As water moves through a dam, it has kinetic energy that powers machines called turbines. The rotating turbines are connected to large generators that transform the mechanical energy from the turbines into electrical energy. Electricity is the movement of tiny particles called electrons that buzz around the outside of atoms. Electricity flows when electrons jump from one atom to another. Metals like aluminum or copper make it easier for electrons to make that jump. They're called conductors. When these electrons flow through a complete loop, they become an electrical circuit. Let's take a closer look at the dam to see how it generates electricity. Water in the Columbia River flows into intake openings on the upstream side of the dam. These openings lead the water into a huge concrete cavern called the spiral case. The spiral case has curving walls that force the water to flow in a circular direction so it will spin a turbine. The flow of water moving past the turbine is controlled by large devices called wicket gates. After the water completes the work of spinning the turbine, it flows into the draft tubes and then exits back into the river on the downstream side of the dam, continuing its journey downriver toward the ocean. The force of water pushing against the huge turbine blades turns the turbine, which is connected by a long steel shaft, to a powerful electromagnet called a rotor. The rotor spins inside a series of copper coils called a stator. The turbine and generator spin about the same rate as the crank of a bicycle being pedaled on a flat surface. When the magnetized rotor turns, the electrons inside the stator's copper coils get excited. The electrons jump from atom to atom, creating an electrical current moving at the speed of light. This electrical energy current then flows into large devices called step-up transformers out in front of the powerhouse. The final result? Electricity. A lot of electricity. One generator alone is capable of generating more than 100 megawatts of power continuously. But all this electricity at the dam doesn't do any good unless we can send it somewhere. So how does electricity get from Wanapum Dam to 400,000 homes? Electricity can flow hundreds of miles on high voltage conductive metal wires called transmission lines like these. Transmission lines carry high voltage power from the dam to substations. Substations allow us to change the voltage or the amount of work that electric currents can do before we send it to homes, businesses, 
factories, and farms. Distribution lines carry power from these substations to the customers. The electricity at Wanapum Dam must be used as soon as it is generated. Too much or too little electricity can create big problems for our electric system. So we have to continuously monitor how much electricity our customers need. Inside Wanapum Dam, there is equipment both big and small that makes this powerful place go. The gigantic turbines and generators are built to last about 50 years. But in the same way that the engine in your car needs to be maintained, these motors need to be cared for too. With the water removed, you can look up at the turbine resting in place. You can also see the walls of concrete and the wicket gates that stand almost 10 feet high. Moving around parts as big as these can only be done with the help of large cranes like these found in the powerhouse. These cranes can lift 350 tons each. That's easily enough lifting power to move a full-size locomotive. When you visit Wanapum Dam, you can see more than concrete. At first glance, the earth embankment sections of the dam may look like a pile of dirt and rocks, but there is more than meets the eye. The earthen embankment has three zones. There is a silt and clay center zone, a transition zone made of sand and gravel, and an outer zone made of large rocks. The embankment sections are about 5,700 feet long. Sometimes, especially when mountain snow melts in the spring, the powerhouse can't handle all of the water flowing through the river. That's why Wanapum Dam has a spillway. The dam spillway is over 800 feet long and has 12 spillway gates. When the dam was built, these gates were among the largest in the world. Each gate is 50 feet wide by 67 feet tall. One spillway gate can pass well over 100,000 cubic feet of water per second. While Wanapum Dam was designed to generate electricity, it must also balance the needs of more than 40 species of fish moving up and down the Columbia River throughout the year. Wanapum Dam was built with two fish ladders that allow hundreds of thousands of adult fish to swim safely upstream to their spawning grounds above Wanapum Dam. In the same way that you and I walk up a flight of stairs, fish migrate these ladders on their journey to spawn upstream. Wanapum Dam also features a very unique fish bypass, or slide for juvenile fish that need to move down the river on their journey to the ocean. The fish bypass was the first of its kind on the Columbia River and was installed in 2008. The bypass is 290 feet long and 90 feet wide at the exit of the chute. It is capable of releasing enough water to fill an Olympic-sized swimming pool in less than five seconds. This bypass operates from April through August during juvenile salmon migration season. It allows juvenile fish to safely pass the dam while swimming near the surface of the water, which is more natural and safer for the fish. Balancing the flow of the river is a full-time job. Wanapum Dam is just a part of a river system that is coordinated among all 14 dams along the Columbia River. It takes a team of hundreds of people working dozens of jobs to make it happen 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. Wanapum Dam's colossal balancing act is something carried out at every moment of every day to generate power for things both big and small. Not only is it always available, it provides some of the cleanest, most affordable electricity in the United States. The river never takes a break which means that this dam has to be operated every moment of every day. <laughs>